Well, good morning and welcome to day one of our uh, October live series. Um, we're going to be doing a 21 day feature um, of herbs and essential oils um, and formulating for safety and impact. So there are a lot of amazing herbs and essential oils out there, uh, as well as botanical extracts that we can use to create monumental uh, health impact for the consumers that are using our end product. But we do need to have some serious safety considerations in place as we're building our formulations and creating um, our products. Now, uh, I'm not sure how familiar you guys all are with herbal actions versus ar aromatherapy actions, but a lot of them overlap. And so we get into this overlap of therapeutic action and we get into the overlap of chemical components within the herbs and the essential oils. And if we're creating a product that is loaded with one specific herbal action or therapeutic action, and we're creating a product that is very high in a certain component, a chemical component, what's gonna happen is we are going to um, create a product that either A, um, fails to work because we have overdone the additions, or B, it's going to create adverse reactions because we have created a product that is so high in a certain component or because we haven't balanced it well with other therapeutic actions or um, things to that effect. And so in this 21 day live series, um, I'm gonna be keeping the video short, uh, but I will be sharing lots of information with you guys um, throughout. So I have um, an Excel spreadsheet that I will be sharing at some point here. I'm still just working on putting the final little tweaks in it. And it's gonna cover all of the therapeutic actions, um, both herbally and aromatically on separate sheets within the spreadsheet. And then from there, we're gonna get into um, the various chemical components and which herbs have specific chemical components that overlap with essential oils with those same chemical components. Because at the end of the day, an essential oil really is just a distilled version of the herb. That being said, the distilled essential oil may not have the same chemical constituents and therapeutic actions as the dry herb itself, but we need to be aware of that parallel and we need to um, work in some safety methodology so that our formulas are A, stable, and B, safe for our end user. So I'm just gonna go through a couple examples here from the spreadsheet that I'm working on for you guys. Um, sorry, the writing is very, very little. I should zoom that in a little. All right, that is a wee bit better. So as an example, we can get into essential oils. Um, oh goodness, again, I need to zoom in. Sorry, bear with me. There we go, okay. So we have, um, as an example, uh, anti-emetic. Anti so essential, or sorry, herbs that are anti-emetic are the herbs that will help um, settle nausea. And so we see that in, in ginger is a great example. Um, so if we're using ginger uh, as an herb in a product, we don't want to necessarily be using an antiemetic uh, essential oil in that same product because it will throw things out of balance. It will be too strong. It will be less stable. Um, so we would look at you know, perhaps a different essential oil that would have some antiemetic uh, properties, but maybe different constituents than the ginger per se. So you would use, let's say, lemon and ginger together. Um, whereas if you overlapped the ginger with the ginger, you can only imagine the kind of problems you would run into. So there are a lot of um, herbs and essential oils that work similarly, um, and there are some that work very synergistically, and there are others that, that don't play very nice at all. And so this is what we're going to be discussing over the next 21 days, um, just how to use um, the individual herbs and essential oils to create the most impact uh, in the safest manner possible for our end consumer. Um, and then again, we're gonna talk about, you know, how to use the dry herbs um, within our formulas and how to use the essential oils within our formulas. And uh, we'll get into 
um, a little bit of formulation and blending information um, to cover some of that. And then of course we will get into uh, a few topics on um, dermal absorption and distribution and how those herbs and essential oils are getting to you know the individual areas to treat the specific symptoms that we are aiming to treat um, and best methods to uh, best methods to get that um, herbal and aromatic property to the specific area so um, there are some tips and tricks um, you know, to to allow um, to allow the um, botanicals to, I guess, permeate the skin better and um, disperse and, and distribute within the body better. So there are fixatives. There are um, there are lots of different ways that we can um, use fixatives and extenders in our products to help move. That those botanicals to the areas we want and to keep them in the system a little bit longer so that there's almost a time delay reaction and it's a, it's a steady stream then um, of, of the medicinal values of the herbs and the essential oils. So that is just kind of a really brief overview of, of what we're going to be talking about. I am going to share a couple spreadsheets that will have um, the herbal actions and the aromatic actions um, the aromatherapy oil actions um, and I'll share those spreadsheets into the group as we go um, and again there will be a couple of research studies that we're going to cover um, about the dermal absorption distribution and dispersion within the system uh, and what that looks like and then I will have some technical data to share with you guys on um, the fixatives and the extenders and things like that as well so it's uh, it's going to be a fun 21 days it's one of my favorite topics because this is this is kind of what i do so some of my products are licensed as natural health products other other products are licensed as cosmetic products but every product is formulated with impact to health as my main goal and so through using herbs and essential oils and various botanicals uh, i'm able to create different um, therapeutic actions within the end use consumer um, to treat and manage symptoms of chronic illness, daily wellness, um, things like that. So it's, it's one of my favorite topics. It's something I could literally go on and on and on about because I'm very passionate about the fact that we can be using um, just regular daily use products to improve our quality of life and our day-to-day -day wellness just regularly like I mean if if we formulate these products correctly we can offer endless solutions to the general public um, for better quality of life and better day-to-day -day wellness so we're going to talk lots about that over the next 21 days and glad to be back doing my 21 day lives hope we'll see some of you guys on here chatting and being part of it and we will chat with you guys all tomorrow um, more about this Take care for now. Have a good day. Happy Monday, everyone. Have a great week. Bye for now.